Hi and welcome back to My Nana's Apron. I got to tell you this story. My grandmother was a perfect, awesome cook. From her pies, to her salads, to what she made on Thanksgiving. As a kid, you couldn't ask for anything more. And I was not a picky eater. So I lucked out and um, had her. Now she, I was 10 years old when I remembered this recipe. And she had already had grandchildren. Uh, I think Karen, my uh, cousin, Aunt Ruth's daughter, was um, 10 years older than me. Something like that. Because she was uh, like a teenager when I was 10. Anyway, um, I was sitting there thinking that she had the best mayonnaise. This is what she called it, mayonnaise. And it was homemade. And um, I'm like, I would like to get that recipe if I could find somebody on the web that makes it like she did. And I'm talking no milk, no oil. And a lot of people put cream in their dressings and stuff like that. So I'm sitting there thinking and I saw somebody on the internet boiling it on the stove. And I'm thinking, I remember her cooking it on the stove. Now that's a long memory because that had to be like 60 years ago. And I went to my mom's little box and lo and behold there it was. And the reason I hadn't picked up on it before is I was not looking for this. So I have two versions. One was Grandma's. And the other one was uh, Cousin Karen's. Now they're a little bit different. And I'll put both of them at the bottom. I'm going to focus on Grandma's. And um, this one has a lot of sugar, so we're going to bear with it because I'm going to make it exactly how these little cards say. So I'm going to take you over the stove and show you how it's done. Okay, this is kind of me winging it because a lot of people on the web were using a double boiler, which would mean putting water in the bottom here, putting a bowl on the top, and that way they weren't scorching their eggs. Now I'm going to try to do this without scorching my eggs and I hope I do it right because I don't have any more sugar. So um, I'm going to show you the recipe. First of all we have one cup of sugar. I know one whole cup of sugar is not bueno, it's not good. But this is the recipe, so I can't, I've got to go back to my grandma's recipe that was so good over fresh summertime tomatoes. Oh my goodness. Now, she called it a mayonnaise. It's really a salad dressing. And so I'm going to start off with the sugar. Here I have a teaspoon of dried mustard, half a teaspoon of salt. Now my cousin Karen's recipe, after at the bottom of my recipe on, on the site, uses prepared mustard, like the yellow mustard. Now I'm sure you can go crazy with Dijon's and different kinds of vinegars and stuff like that, but like I say, I want to keep it uh, the way she made it. Now another thing too is she would have used regular salt, not the kosher, not the sea salt, just regular salt. And so that's those two. I'm going to turn my burner on and I'm going to put it on medium, I'm going to say medium low. Only because I don't want to scramble the eggs. And this is, I hope I do this right folks. And we'll see how it goes. I'm using a wooden spoon and that's something grandma would have used wooden spoon and it also allows her to stir it while it's cooking and that's what we have to do. I've got the burner on, I've got to wait till it comes up to heat and then we'll put the eggs in. 
Now, another thing too is it called for two eggs or four yolks. I went with the four yolks. It seemed like it would be richer. And I know her mayonnaise slash salad dressing was yellow. And it may have come from the mustard, but I'm thinking it came from the egg yolks. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Now I forgot to tell you the recipe calls for one tablespoon of flour. But you know in our world here on this channel, it would be gluten-free flour. But I'm reading the recipe just like Grandma made it. So let me start stirring this up. It looks like it's coming to a boil. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Okay, I'm putting in my four yolks. I'm going to use the rest of it for um, breakfast, the whites. See, I think I had it too high. Um, that was a cup of water. And then I have a half a cup of vinegar. And I'm using apple cider vinegar, which would probably what be what Grandma had. I think, yeah, I did this wrong. I'm going to keep going, though. I'm going to keep going. And the secret is to bring it to a simmer, not a boil. And um, I'm just going to keep going and show you what this comes out to be. I should have added my liquids before I turned on the burner. It'll still be good. Maybe a little chunky. <laughs> okay, it's still too high. There we go. Looks like I'm cooking a couple pieces of egg in there. I should have used a double boiler. I might have to strain this. Get the chunks of sugar out. <laughs> Crunchy salad dressing. Crunchy mayonnaise. That's what happens when you're cooking. And I have no more sugar to start over again. I have plenty of eggs. And as you notice, there's no pepper in here. People weren't really big on pepper. I know my dad was, but as far as putting it in recipes, uh, she always waited for them to add it on the side. Okay, I'm going to let this come up to a, a little boil here. A slow boil just to heat it up and I'll be back. Okay, it's starting to thicken up like it's supposed to. That's why they put the flour in it. And um, I'm thinking that four egg yolks would have made it um, thick enough. But I still had to go by the recipe. And I think I'm going to strain this when I put it in my little jar to get out. There is some pieces of egg in there. I did go too high to begin with on the burner. And um, the sugar kind of got crispy. But as you can see, there's always a way to save things and what I'm talking about right now is the sugar that's in there on the bottom or on the excuse me I keep burping on the sides should dissolve a little bit and it has so as you can see it's starting to thicken 
I'm going to show you the boil that it's at. Of course, I'm going to taste this whenever it's done to make sure that it doesn't need something else. And I'm still waiting for it to thicken, so I'll be back in a minute. I turned it back up to let it boil, and that's what the flour does. And um, it's starting to get thick now. That's what I wanted. I have to keep stirring it. I don't want anything stuck to the bottom of the pan. And uh, all else fails is Grandma would have been proud of me to make her salad dressing that she called mayonnaise. And um, it could have been used for a mayonnaise. I don't even think we had mayonnaise in the refrigerator. I don't remember even eating mayonnaise except for this. She did put it in her um, coleslaw. This was her dressing for coleslaw. And if you buy a, um, a jar of coleslaw on the shelf at the grocery store, I'm not going to mention any names, it is this color and it's thin for coleslaw dressing. I just want it to get a little bit thicker than it is now. I did turn the heat up a little bit and I'm going to turn it back down. It is bubbling. That's what I wanted to get it thick. And I'm going to strain this because uh, of my errors earlier. I should have put the liquids in when I put the sugar and the egg yolks in there. But you live and learn. Aha! It's getting thicker. Now I made a salad for dinner. And that's what we're going to be putting this on. Let me taste it. It is a lot sweet. I mean, it is sweet. And according to the people on the internet, you don't want it to boil, but it's doing mighty fine the way it is. And some people call it boiled dressing, and other ones call it cooked dressing, and I'm going to call it cooked dressing, a.k.a. mayonnaise. Sometimes you just got to be patient, and sometimes I don't have the patience. Okay, I'm going to turn the burner off. And I'm going to strain this dressing. It's boiling hot, so I might want to wait a, a couple minutes for it to cool down. I'll be back in a minute. Now I'm going to strain my dressing. Um, I did add a little bit more apple cider vinegar. I have to... I have to go off the recipe because it needed a little bit more with all that sugar. So what I've got here is I've got my canning funnel and my strainer. And I'm going to slowly pour this. Yeah, I should have used a double boiler. Yeah, too cool. Huh? Oh. Want to hand it to me? Want to turn it on? It's already on. Oh, okay. This is what I got out of the um, dressing, and that's because cooking it on the stove without a without a double boiler cooked the eggs a little bit. So I've got a little bit over each here. Oh boy. As soon as it cools down, I'm going to take it to the sink 
and find another container to put it in. I didn't know it would be that much. So I'll be back. Okay, I forgot to put in the tablespoon of butter at the end, but as you can see, I was having a, a little problem over there. And I have to say, I tasted this, and it's way too much sugar. So I would suggest, and I'll put the suggestions in my recipe at the bottom, as to how to um, bring that down a little bit. Because um, back in the day, I guess they like things sweet, and as a kid, of course, I, give it to me, I, I love it, it's, it tastes good. But um, it made uh, this, I guess this is a pint jar, I'm not sure. And it does thicken, still hot, it does thicken in the refrigerator. So even though it's running now, it'll get thicker in there. Now if you notice, I didn't use any oil. I didn't bring out any mixers or hand mixers or anything like that. Because Grandma didn't have that stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a little bit on this salad. And then we can, whoops, sorry. Paul's going to eat that now. I don't know if he likes that much dressing. I <laughs> didn't mean to do that. I'm a mess up today, aren't I? But we could garnish it the way we want. We tend to like the um, pumpkin seeds in uh, the tortilla strips and stuff like that. Now, tip of the day. When you're making your salad, at the bottom, put in a paper towel. I hadn't made salads for a long time and I made one and it was, I opened it up the next day and it was all watery. And I'm like, dang. And I don't have a um, salad spinner and I probably wouldn't have done that anyway. But anyway, with the paper towel in the bottom, every day I opened this up and the lettuce was dry. When it was all done, I took the paper towel out and you could have squeezed the water out. So that's my tip of the day to help you keep your lettuce fresh. And um, I hope you try this recipe, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Grandma's recipe plus Karen's recipe. And then I'm going to put my suggestions to the side with the ingredients. So, sorry Grandma. I hope you have a great day. It's cold out. And uh, at least it's not snowing. We're supposed to get rain. But I'm just waiting for summer. That's all I'm doing. And I'll see you next time. Bye.